Greetings, mind crafters, and welcome to another delightful mind craft discussion on this uh, hazy day. We still got the haze going on with the with the forest fires, I think, but it's still beautiful. It's doing wild things to the sunsets and the moon. Um, you know, probably not that we'd want to invite the toxicity, you know, just before, but it is it is making them look beautiful. Um, and of course, everybody in Canada is probably getting it much worse than we are. But anyway, so um, <clears throat> grateful to be here as always. And my name is Kimberly Quinn. Giovanni's right down here, but you can't see him because he's getting ready to take a schnooze. The golden retriever, right? Right, honey? Okay, so today we'd like to talk about how we are not what we do. I made a few notes. Again, I'm kind of on a notes jag. I often, the high majority of the time, I don't plan, actually. Uh, but I've just been kind of inspired and I just wanted to, you know, quick. And so we are not what we do. And, and um, because if we were what we do, we would be human doings instead of human beings, right? And I actually wrote a book years ago called Striving for the Purple Heart, Mothers in the Universal Pursuit of Honor. And that was, I wrote that book. This just made me think of it years ago, like that, 2003 or six or I don't know, a long time ago. And that, and, and the, that was the specific discussion was targeted, you know, was for young mothers because young mothers fall into this very easily because of the nature of being a new mother, right? And, um, but that, it happens to all of us. It's all of us. It, we, can, we can really get wrapped up in being human doings rather than realizing, you know, that we are human beings. We're actually spiritual beings having human experience, but that... Uh, we are not what we do. We are not what we do. And because think about it, if we were what we do, then when we didn't, we wouldn't be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so we tend to it. We tend to also attach ourselves to outcome with what we do. So, you know, uh, a good example is sales, right? And um, you know, commission based. That's that's probably one of the easiest examples you know to come up with is you know like you know because then you're only as good as your last sale, right? I mean, it's just how it works. I remember hearing that in the bartender world way a long time ago. You're only as good as your last shift. Like you crushed it. They loved if you were. They would loved you if you were a hero. Like somebody called. They say called out here in Vermont. So they called in. Makes more sense actually. If somebody called out and it's like a Saturday night, or we're at a ski resort. So <clears throat> Saturday night during let's say President's Week or ski season or in general or whatever, you're a hero. But then that lasted this long, and then you're right back to, you know, regular you know, peasant bartender status. So that's how it worked. So, and that's really just true because we, we, we often measure ourselves up um, against the sales quota or the verbiage, you know, teacher of the year, the month of the year, employee of the month of the year, or, you know, and it just, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, end, right? And so it's important to realize that. So I have to give Wayne Dyer credit for that. If you, what does he say? If you are what you do, then when you don't, you aren't. Yeah, that was him, not me. The rest of this is is uh, me with a splash of him. So I talked about the book, and I said, in reality, um, what we're doing, what we do, is a response, is a response to to this intrinsic purpose, this intrinsic, authentic self in alignment, being on on his or her or their purpose. That's what's really going on. So the stuff that's out here, whether it's meeting a sales quota and you crushed it, we're not saying that, you sold the cars, <clears throat> you sold the insurance, you sold the, all the stuff going on cyber world that they're doing, you sold the log me in, you know, accounts, or you sold, you sold, you sold, whatever, um, got the promotion, this, that, and the other thing, crushed it in your new business, hit this mark that you, monetary mark you wanted to, or a number of book sales or whatever, um, but really as hard as it is, we actually want to try our best to detach from the outcome. It doesn't mean it doesn't feel good. Hold tight one second. A little bit of a scratch because of all this going on. I'm kind of sens sensitive to it because I've always had <clears throat> kind of lung issues a little bit. I don't know why. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life or anything, but, um, anywho, I'm doing just fine. I may have to drink a little bit of water through this thing. Uh, so, so this is super Buddhist, right? We've talked about detaching from outcomes before. So this is this is a little different, you know, twist to it because it's 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 similar, but it's similar, but we're going with a different context. So separating from outcomes 
is important anyway, because we've talked about that when we're dependent on people's approval, people's whatever it is, it is that's out here. That means we have to check these boxes out here. We have to get that approval, get that promotion, get that whatever, get that person to like us or think well of us or whatever in order to be happy. We don't want that. We want to stay in the frame and bring the needs in here. This twist is about um, what we're actually doing for our professional, say, job, career, calling, and they are in a hierarchy. Jobs doesn't mean you can't be happy at all three. Of course you can. Jobs, however, are basically a means to an end. They're about extra, extrinsic motivation, usually. That means the paycheck. You're working there because you get the discount, maybe also, whatever. But it's it's externally. It doesn't mean you're miserable either. But jobs, job is more basic in that sense. Um, and we're not saying that, a, you know, the... You know, super killer work ethic is awesome. And none of it's negative. It's just, that's just the truth that jobs are more, um, we're, we're, mo we're motivated extrinsically for the job for the most part. Careers, we're more in intrinsically motivated often, but it's both. It doesn't mean one excludes the other because the paychecks most of us need, not all of us, but most of us, I would say the majority of us need the paycheck. And that doesn't, just because we need the paycheck and that's extrinsic doesn't mean it, it takes away from the intrinsic you, you can definitely have both you just if you love what you do and you get paid for it I do that's great so but the career thing is a little bit more invested usually there's some element of education and or training you know college graduate school the military all the gamut of trades trainings you might have done uh for real estate and got your life you know whatever but it has usually has a little bit more investment Usually the happiness kind of level is longer lasting. Jobs tend to be, again, we're not, we do boxes, the whole boxes thing. It's obviously not going to be true for everybody. Careers tend to be longer lasting, tends to be a little more growth in them because of such an investment, because you're, you're drawn to a career because of interest usually, right? Even if the money's part of it, it's okay. You know, you know, doctors and lawyers and all that, but you'll also love it. So it's all good, right? Um, entrepreneurs, the co-creativity element. And then there's the calling and the calling is the highest level. And again, money, in fact, it works this way. Actually, when you do what you love, the money will follow. I forget who I constantly quote that and I can't remember her name. It's uh eighties or seventies or early nineties, something long time ago, do what you love and the money will follow book that if you, you know, you do, you're in alignment, you're following your authentic purpose that the money comes like a side effect. And Aaron Doughty, actually, I haven't listened to him in a long time, but he talks a lot about that. You know, it's, you don't want to focus on the money, but realize that it's a side effect, and that's good. You don't want to block it either. So what? So when you when we are in alignment in doing our purpose, often the money just kind of flows right in. Uh, my mastermind friends are all about that, actually. Um, okay, so it's super Buddhist, detaching from outcomes. So we often measure ourselves up against the outcomes of the fruits of our labor. And it's so important to separate this. So I want to be super clear that when we measure ourselves up against the commission, against, um, I mean, I got, I, a while back, got teacher of, of, of the year. We call it something different at the college level. I think it was teaching in excellence is what it was at Champlain back in 2018. And I did, I was shocked. I mean, I was surprised. Like, I didn't know this whole dinner thing with other awards and stuff. And so you go, you go to that automatically to cheer on your colleagues and everything. I didn't even know it was, one of the best days of, you know, outside of getting married and having my five kids, one of the top, you know, up here days of my whole life. It was amazing. So we're not saying not to enjoy that experience, right? Not to, I mean, it felt, I was on a cloud for weeks. It does, but there's a difference between it just came to all the good feels and, and, and just enjoying that and basking in the good feels and actually needing boxes to be checked to feel that, you know, to get your your uh, self esteem and all that from it, if it just happens, good, and then bask in it while it lasts, and then it's just and it's a good memory. And we, I mean, we like we're, as human beings, we like to be approved. Of, we like to be liked. We like to be um, appreciated. And uh, that it's but it's it's again it's it's the having it just happen and needing it are different. So separating ourselves from what we from what what we do because they're just results we all move around this earth creating results we make this choice we make that choice that decision we do this project at work we sell this we do that we teach this we write that book we write that column 
it's all just and so in its results so it's important to realize that so like for me um you know realizing this is my authentic okay on the inside i know these three things which i've said to people at champlain quite a bit I know that I know that I love people. I'm very, very extrovert. I love meeting new people. I love the strangers I meet. I love my students. I love when I go speaking in a place brand new and I don't know a soul. I love that. So love people. Um, I'm extremely creative. It just comes with the wiring, I think, with the Fast Mind Club. And I'm absolutely an educator. So you put those three things that are have me in like my authentic path, that can look like lots of things. It looks like teaching a college class. It looks like designing the, 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 the course Mind Craft. It looks like the gamut of workshops that I've run for all different. So it's not just, you know, my, I love my first years and my all the way through seniors. Then I was, I've also done them for parents. I've done them for professionals. I've done them for specific groups of professionals like student affairs. Um, I've, and then uh, for, um, for students, students wise, I've done ones for student athletes. Hope Happens Here, which is suicide prevention. Like I've done all these contexts. So the context isn't what matters at all. Not one bit. It matters that I feel in alignment on, my, on purpose when I am engaging with people, educating with a creative thread. That is my, that is my happy place. My happy place. I'm just flying around the room. And what's cool is when you're in the, we call this the flow, and that's the work of Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. Um, when you're in that place of alignment and cognitive flow, you forget kind of where, and I don't mean in a delusional way or in a disoriented way, you forget where you are in the sense of, um, you lose track of time is a really better way to say it. You're so in the zone, you're so in the moment, time's a million, you're just right locked into the moment that you forget. So I actually have to keep, because Champlain's a clockless campus, which is great, you're in the moment. I have to kind of go back and forth to the computer to check because I'll keep them until midnight. I'm buzzing around the floor. Also true with workshops with parents. I love engaging with parents. Also true with the professionals I talk to. So I've got to keep an eye because I will just keep going. So that's one of the things. And you forget you lose track of time and you lose track of you in a sense. Because when you're so in alignment, it's, I don't mean it in a codependent way. You're just, you're, you're, you're one with the music, if that's your thing. You're one with the being an athlete like michael felt like you're just in the zone and you're one with teaching or work, running a workshop or whatever and uh that happened to me also at the ted talks because that's it's all the same that's what i'm saying context is all different but the the things are the same the people the creativity the education that's that's my that's my um that's my my ideal sweet spot right there and i barely remember the ted talks like i Good thing they taped them because I wouldn't have, I, I just, I wasn't thinking of outcomes. I wasn't thinking of anything coming out of it, not at all. Um, and straight from there, when it was over, people come up to you and talk and share their stories. That's like my favorite part of any talk is when people come up and share about themselves and talk to you. And that's all I remember. I wasn't thinking about anything else. And so it's important to remember that to separate from outcomes. I wasn't thinking the one of the, one of those, well, they both did, did well, but the one has, I don't even know the views anymore, like oh, over a hundred thousand. I don't, I don't even know. But at that moment I was, I didn't care. I, I couldn't have, I wasn't even thinking of anything about that. Um, I wasn't thinking about anything. I was just kind of sort of on, you know, just I had rehearsed it and out it came. So, so that's the important thing is just to let go of the fruits of your labor, whether it's money, whether it's kudos, whether it's anything, because we are not human doings or human beings. We just want to focus on staying on our purpose really listening to that inner voice when we listen to our inner voice the green lights show up like loud and clear like like neon signs in las vegas they just show up the phone call just happens the person just is happens to be right there right then in the lobby that you don't know that says oh can you come speak at this it all just comes together when we stay authentic our authentic uh self so let me see, I made some notes. So, oh, and one more thing is that you realize too, when you separate yourself from the outcome and uh, also oh, the fruits of your labor, I guess that's sort of the same thing, just said differently. The, comp the, the If you have a competitive spirit, I always did athletically. I don't as much in other ways. I, I with Not with people and that kind of like petty, but like um, if, if any kind of competitive like, 
oh, I got selling more books or getting more speaking engagement. That's just my own context. Fit it to whatever is you. So let's say sales. We have both of our sons are in sales, like, and they're both doing very well. Without you know, there you know that you don't need when you are in the zone like that. You don't have any need to compare yourself to who else is doing what, because you realize that you're just on team. You're on the same team. Like I am on team positivity. However, I can get get there while having a ton of fun because I love people so much. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. If they're doing you know very similar workshops to what I'm doing, well, there's a big world out there that needs a lot of it, right? With how to reduce anxiety, becoming more aware of the of the spiral, the triangular thinking of distorted thinking with uh, depression, the, or the many advantages of happiness, you know, the idea of optimism as a lifestyle and all these things that I talk about. If I meet a whole bunch of other people that are doing the same thing, well, good for you. The whole world needs it. So you don't get threatened and you don't really get competitive unless you just want to amp up your own game because you kind of realize when you separate, when you do the Buddhist thing, and you separate from the detach, you detach from the, the outcomes and the fruits of your labor and all that showboaty stuff. You just feel so incredibly authentically confident and secure with who you are in your skin. And you just, it's like a knowing. You just know you're doing the right thing. You know you're on purpose. You know you're, you're totally connected to your divine source. And you just know it's all going to work out. And you don't really think about anything else. <laughs> you know, you're just kind of doing your, doing your thing. You know, you just, you just know. You're doing your thing, you're being real, and you're being you. And then as far as whatever unfolds out of it, it's going to be great. And that's all you really have to know. You can really just kind of let go. And I think that's, that's all I have to say right now. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from uh, super hazy but beautiful northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.